to a quick video about my latest major project that I've been working on. My friend uh, commissioned me to build him a custom emulator box in the style of an old Game Boy. Um, it is using a Raspberry Pi Zero computer with a custom Linux operating system called RetroPie. Um, for the audio, I'm using an Adafruit Max 98357 I2S uh, digital analog converter and amplifier, and I'll get into that a little bit. The screen is a BW 3.5 LCD screen for like a car, um, I guess. Uh, there's a little 8 ohm speaker from a laptop in here. Um, there's a volume control. I have drilled out two holes for extra buttons. There are also 3D printed parts in here that I will upload to Thingiverse. Um, the battery is a 3.7 volt, 2500 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. It's an LP785060. Um, and the charge controller that I'm using is an Adafruit PowerBoost 500C. Um, and then there's, you can see I've rerouted the uh, low battery LED here, so this red light means that the battery is getting low. Uh, basically, there is a mini USB or a micro USB port here for charging, so you can use basically any 5 volt uh, charger for your, your phone or anything will charge this. There's a USB port here that you can use for just about anything. You can even plug in another controller. Uh, over here is a mini HDMI port, which you can use a small adapter like this. Um, power switch is up here, but there's also a second power switch that I've uh, done. This is a safe power switch, so this will actually shut down the computer properly, and you actually have to hold it. And it shuts it down for you. Um, there is a 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack here. It only has mono audio, but that's usually fine for retro games. Uh, and when you plug in a headphone here, the speaker turns off, which is really convenient. Um, there are L and R buttons that I've added, these little tack buttons, into the drill holes uh, or the uh, screw holes. Um, this screen cover is custom made from uh, is from a website called retrofresh.uk. I'll provide a link in the description. The button control is just a custom, just like a passive PCB with button pads on them. And the software that I used to to sort of map that to, to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi is something called Retro Game, which is a great piece of software that. Um, basically emulates a USB keyboard and then you can just edit the config file to map to keyboard controls. Okay, so some of the downsides of my design uh, is first of all the battery life. 2500 milliamp hours is not a lot, uh, but it was the biggest battery that I could find that could fit in here. Uh, there, like I said, there's no L2 and R2 buttons, but for my application it wasn't really necessary. Again, there's no stereo. If you wanted stereo output for the audio, you would need to go with a different approach than me. Another thing is that it's very fragile. Um, most of this stuff is being held in with uh, hot glue, um, and there's only three screw holes that are still being used. These two and then this one in here, and these two were replaced with a 3D printed part, so um, it's not something that you want to drop. Um, and the last thing is that it took a lot of Dremel work to, to mod this case. So starting here, um, this is of course the Raspberry Pi. Um, the, the screen is here, and the screen driver is this board here. Um, this is the same model used by the guy on uh, Pseudomod. So uh, the same sort of mod that he did with this, bridging this pin to this pin here uh, to let it run on five volts did work for me. Um, it was exactly as he described, so that was awesome. Um, the little audio 
board down there, the Adafruit Max, whatever, whatever, digital to analog converter uh, with an audio amplifier. It uses I squared S as a protocol. Um, these are the controls. Uh, and I just have some resistors here for some very basic protection of the GPIO pins, but um, generally, if I had more room, I would have done more. This is the custom PCB right here that the the button pads are located. Here is the 3.5 millimeter jack, the 8 ohm uh, speaker, the volume control. So this is the Adafruit power supply. It takes uh, the lithium polymer battery, plugs in there, um, and then you have the, the switch, the, uh, the battery low LED. Um, you can charge it with this USB port here. This USB port then goes to the Raspberry Pi to uh, let you plug in controllers and things. All right, so I'm going to remote into the machine. And one of the first things that I had to do custom was the sound. So um, if I look at the config, or boot config.txt, um, one of the important things was that I commented out um, dtparm audio equals on, and then I added these lines dt overlay equals rpi dac, and dt overlay i2s uh, mmap. Also, if we look at the um, asound.conf, um, some of this was unnecessary. I wanted to control the minimum maximum volume. I was trying to get software volume to work. So if I look, now we're going to look at uh, Retro Game, which is the, um, the control mapping software that I used. Um, basically, it's really simple. You download this script, retrogame.sh, you run that, you go through uh, basic configurations, and it um, uh, you, you choose sort of a default configuration, but then you can just write your own, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Uh, if we look at uh, boot retrogame.cfg, which automatically creates this file, but then you set these configurations yourself. So I've chosen these pins, and the numbers are by GPIO number, not pin number. Um, another thing that I did was change the font size on the game lists and the themes. Carbon and Carbon XML. And you go down to um, background game list. So text list name equals game list. And then here is font size. It was set to 0 0.03. I set it to 0 0.06 and that seems to be the ideal size. So so there's another thing, if you have trouble with your screen resolution you can edit the configuration file for uh, RetroArch which is Arc config, that file there, and you can manually set the screen resolution here. The little screen that I'm using is 640 by 480. So the last thing I'm going to show you is the uh, the custom script that I made. I think I put it in. Yeah, so off button, uh, really simple. So really simple Python script that um, waits for a button press, sleeps for a certain period of time, and then. Uh, Basically, if you've held down that button for a certain number of seconds, it will uh, shut the computer down. So I know I said this was going to be a short video, but it turned into a long one. Um, this is just an introduction to the tutorial I've written. I've provided very detailed instructions, pictures, and wiring diagrams at the link in the description, so take a look if you're interested. I know many people have done similar projects to this, but I did do it slightly differently, and I think it's important for people to try variations of projects and share information. That's it. Thanks for watching.